The lockdown is especially hard because we are missing our families and our friends. And I have to tell you, I'm missing you all so, so much. Especially in a, a congregation, a church family, if you like, where we, we get together often, we, we hug one another, we shake hands. We miss that. We miss having grandchildren that we can sit on our knee. We miss having our children around us. We miss having parents, grandparents. It's been so, so hard, that family connection. And we've been trying to do it as we are this morning through the internet, through social media, through Zoom meetings. And it's great to see one another, but we just miss that personal contact. The Lord Jesus Christ invites us to be part of his family, with his personal contact. And today we're just going to take some time to work out, well, how can we do that? And what is that all about? A good place to start is with a commandment that the Lord Jesus gave us. It was one that says, love one another as I have loved you. So we're going to start this morning by singing a new commandment I give unto you. during this time we're still getting in contact with our youngsters Chloe thank you Chloe's been putting stuff up there for you to do and we're going to see if we can push that out a little bit even more as time goes on and it's great that you watch as well and this morning I wanted to ask you do you know what I mean when I talk about a family tree after you've finished, if you want to put that into Google, you'll kind of see all kinds of diagrams about family trees. There's one up here. But one of the things that I could do is to explain to you how a family tree works. For example, what about my family tree? Well, obviously, if I was to start with me and go in the downward direction, then I have a son called Jonathan. But I could go sideways because I've got a brother 
and he's also got a wife and family and I can go this way because I'm married to Graham and he has a sister and he has family so we can point in that direction too and I could go this way because I have a mum called Irene, many of you will know her and she also had family that you can go left and right and the tree gets bigger as you add on branches. So I want you to think back now to way, way back before Easter, Palm Sunday in fact, and I asked you all to draw around your palms and write your names on and send them to me. Well, what I did, and you weren't here to see this, but when I printed off all the palms, and I've done a, a kind of a blue Peter, this is one that I prepared earlier type of thing, you all had your names on, but when the emails came in, you sent them as families. So I kept all of your hands, your palms, on a branch. In a sense, you have a, a family branch on our palm tree. It's just here. And there were so many different parts of that tree. So many different branches. We have, and I can't, haven't got time to look at them all, but we've got an Ersoy branch. We've got a Russell branch. We've got a McCluskey branch. We've got a Gordon branch. We've got a Gables branch. And right in the middle, if you remember, I put Blizz's paw prints in there. And I guess I've got a branch for the puppet family as well. All of these little branches... But how does that make us family? Because we've all got our different branches there. It makes us family because of who we are attached to. Jesus said something strange. He said, I am the true vine. Now, a vine is like a big tree and it's got lots and lots of branches come off it. He's the tree in the middle. And what we need to do is attach ourselves to him. And then we become one big family, Jesus' family. That's why we're called Christians. How do we do that? Well, he said, what you need to do is listen to how I teach you, listen to my instructions, live my way, and a good place to start is by loving one another as I have loved you. So to remind us of that, we've got a lovely little song, I Could Be Happy. I need to put this down to show you the actions. <coughs> I could be happy, and you could be happy, and that's the way it should be, we clap along. I could be happy, and you could be happy, and that's the way it should be, because God loves you, and I love you, and that's the way it should be, and so on it goes. Next verse is, I could be very sad, and we need to make like we're crying, you could be very sad, and that's not the way it should be. So no clapping at that bit, a big shake of the head. And then we come back to the chorus to remind ourselves that God loves you, and I love you, and that's the way it should be. Let's give it a try. i 
just the way it should be. God loves you and I love you and that's the way it should be. For this morning's reading, we are staying in John's Gospel. It's John chapter 15. And we're also staying with the Longmuir family. Thank you, Gail, for reading this one for us as well. John 15, chapter 1 to 12. Jesus, the real vine. I am the real vine, and my father is the gardener. He breaks off every branch in me that does not bear fruit, and he prunes every branch that does bear fruit, so that it will be clean and bear more fruit. You have been made clean already by the teaching I have given you. Remain united to me, and I will remain united to you. A branch cannot bear fruit by itself. It can do so only if it remains in the vine. In the same way, you cannot bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, and you are the branches. Those who remain in me, and I in them, will bear much fruit, for you can do nothing without me. Those who do not remain in me are thrown out like a branch, and dry up. Such branches are gathered up and thrown into the fire where they are burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, then you will ask for anything you wish and you shall have it. My Father's glory is shown by you bearing much fruit and in this way you become my disciples. I love you just as the Father loves me. Remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love. But as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. There has long been a debate what they call um, uh, is it nature or nurture? What is that all about? Well, we know enough about science to realise that we inherit a lot from our parents. That's why I guess our family tree does become important. We can inherit our looks, we can inherit certain conditions. For example, there is a likelihood that you may develop something like psoriasis if a family member before you has had it. If two family members, like your mum and your dad, have both got it, then that likelihood is increased. So there are various conditions that we know are passed down through our bloodline, our family tree. But what about our behaviour? Can our behaviour honestly be passed down? Our personality types? Often we hear people say, oh, you're just like your mum, or you're just like your dad, or I could hear your mum saying that, and I've actually said that to some of the children in the church. But how much of that do we inherit, or how much do we learn? Because it's a true fact that we certainly seem to turn a little bit more like the people that we hang around with. We pick up their expressions, we pick up their idiosyncrasies. So how much is nature and how much is nurture? By the same token, we also have what has been termed as personality types. And anyone who's looked at this kind of Myers-Briggs type mapping will talk about things like somebody being um, more introvert, somebody being more extrovert. The reality, though, is that we all kind of operate in all of these things at one time or another, and we can move from one to another. There's just often one particular type that tends to suit us and that we're more comfortable with. Do we inherit that? Or is that something that happens as we grow up through nurture? That's always been a big question, but it does certainly seem that certain families do seem to have certain personality types. The difficulty is when we are forced or we feel it's important to operate in a personality type that's not our natural one. We have to concentrate hard 
We have to think about what we're doing. If you are a natural listener, you have to think hard to make yourself contribute to the conversation. However, if you're a natural talker, you have to say, shut up a minute and let other people get the chance to say something. So sometimes we have to concentrate and make an active effort to be part of our society in which we live. What if, though, if we're going to be part of God's family, showing his nature, what if we struggle because our ordinary human nature keeps getting in the way? Does that mean that we're not part of God's family? And this little passage that we're looking at today, where Jesus talks about a vine and us being branches, should go a long way to explain how that can operate. I want you to think um, about a tree at the, for the moment. Maybe think about an apple tree. And the issues that we have seen um, that fruit growers have had to deal with for many, many years. What if you have a brilliant, big, strong tree here, and it seems to be able to stand and grow strongly, no matter what the weather, but the fruit's not great. And what if over here you have another tree that has the most brilliant fruit, but it doesn't do too well when it's stormy, bits fall off, and so you lose some of the crop. What if we could do something where we could splice those two trees together so you still get the strength, but you also get the benefit of having the brilliant crop? Now, plant growers, fruit growers, learned how to do that years ago. It's what we call a hybrid, where you can splice these things together. Splice them together. Now, what happens when you do that? Immediately, nothing very much. It takes a little bit of time. But eventually, the, the sap, if you like, the lifeblood of the tree, they start to grow through each other and become one to produce a stronger, bigger tree that produces better fruit. Hold on to that analogy and think about what Jesus is saying. He's talking about a vine. It's only natural that Jesus would talk about a vine because he's from a country where that's what they did. They, they took a crop from the vineyard. He's speaking in terminology and using analogies that the ordinary local people could understand. <clears throat> And he talks about himself as being the vine and us being the branches. So in a sense, we're kind of getting spliced in to his bloodline. And if we can take that analogy and think about each and every one of us, our families, but also our biological families, but also our church family being spliced into the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus tells us very, very clearly and often that he and the Father are one. We know that God is spirit. We knew that Jesus came as a human being. So him and the Father operate as one. So the Father's nature and character flows through the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. And what Jesus is doing is inviting us to splice into that. So that the character and nature of God and the Lord Jesus Christ can flow through us too. These are all difficult concepts and quite often we would say the if onlys. If only we could have been there when Jesus was explaining all of this. It would have been easier to understand. I need to tell you it wasn't. I need to tell you that many, many times when Jesus sat with his disciples, a lot of them went, there? What? 
Could you run that by me again? These are concepts that we've all have to struggle to get our heads around, including them. And yet they managed, and so must we. So hold on. What if Jesus invites us to do that? How do we manage to splice into him as the vine? How do we become his branches? And how can we stay attached to the vine? Well, lots of advice there in the scriptures as well. Prayer helps, obviously, because it's our way of communicating with the Lord Jesus Christ. It's our way of speaking to God. It's also their way of speaking to us. So please remember in your prayer time, it's good to have a little bit of quiet and allow him to touch us. Thoughts will come into our minds. We suddenly things start to sort out. A clarity comes. Also, we need to allow his word to teach us. That's why these little times together, although it's not long, these little times together are important because it helps us to dig into God's word and to understand God's word. What is it teaching us? That's how God prunes our branches. That's how we can weather the storms. We used to have a lovely big tree that stood outside. But when the storms hit, some of those branches fell off. And once the branch is disconnected from the main trunk, it dies. And we need to be aware, we need to make a conscious effort that we connect with the vine. What we can do sometimes is when there's a storm in our life, and maybe it's coronavirus, who knows? But when the storms hit our lives, we can disconnect from the vine. And then something about us just shrivels up and dies. And yet the Lord Jesus Christ wants us to stay connected so that he can be our lifeline so that his energy force can be our energy force. It's not that difficult to understand. Think about what they were trying to do, even right now, with coronavirus. When they were wondering and asking if people who had had the virus and recovered, so now have antibodies, could come and give some of their blood so that they could collect the antibodies to be injected into others who were sick with the virus right now. Being part of a bloodline, if you like. What the Lord Jesus Christ is offering is for us to be part of his bloodline, supplying us with a life force. And then the fruit that he's expecting lies in that commandment, the new commandment that he gives us, to love one another as he has loved us. Now that has been something that we've seen a little glimpse of during this difficult time. The queen, when she made her speech on VE Day, She has seen it and she is encouraging us that our streets are not empty. They are full of love. That's important. Remember what the scriptures tell us, that God is love. So people everywhere in our nation and in nations all around the world, even though they don't realize it, are experiencing God through the very nature of love. That's something that we can be excited about. Even more is that we allow the, the life force of God himself that we allow the life force of the Lord Jesus Christ to flow through us. 
Remember what he said, I and the Father are one, just as we are one with him. If ever we needed a life force to get through a tough time, it is right now. But this is a life force that isn't just there for a season. It's not just there for a growing season. And God's word isn't just there to kind of encourage us right just now. God's word is there so that we can be pruned and grow stronger. How does he prune us through his word? Well, that's easy. Sometimes we read something and think, oh, we would say we've got a guilty conscience. I would say, no, no, God's just giving you a dig in the ribs. Come on, sort this out. So as we allow the life force of the Lord Jesus Christ to flow through us, we become more like him. And it becomes easier. We stay connected through prayer, through our worship, and worship is so important. And we stay connected through God's word. And we, as parts of the vine, are all attached to the same trunk, if you like. We all stay connected as family too as God's life force flows through us. Don't allow yourself to become disconnected. Don't allow any storm to pull you away from the tree trunk. Stay connected to the vine. Know his strength. Know his love. And start with that commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. And that is easier to do when you're connected to the very force of love itself. Let us pray. Loving Lord, as we bow before you this morning, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your life force in our world, in our communities, in our churches and in our lives. And we thank you, Lord, that you will flow in us and through us, touching our very hearts and lives. Help us, Lord, to bear fruit for you in this our broken world during what are really tough, tough times. Lord, we pray for our country today. We pray for all of those who are worried those who are in hospital, suffering from coronavirus and other illnesses. We pray for families who are separate at this time. We pray for those who have lost loved ones at this time. Our world truly has been thrown upside down. But Lord, you have always thrown our lives upside down as you call us to live lives of love, compassion, humility, grace and mercy, showing your fruit. Father, we take a few moments in silence just now as we bring before you our personal prayers, our worries and our concerns for those that we love, those that we carry in our hearts, and indeed for our world. Help us, Lord, to hold on to your words. Help us to be brave enough to allow you to draw close enough to prune us close enough to transform us, close enough to allow your life force to flow through our very beings. Hold us and keep us until we can all come together again, until we can celebrate being your family again and beyond. We ask in Jesus' name, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever. Amen. We close just now by singing a beautiful hymn, And Can It Be? So now may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you evermore. Amen.